Hey, it's Casey Potts, and you've landed in Casey's Corner, a podcast to help us millennial moms overcome the overwhelm of everyday life with confidence, humor, and style. I want you to look at this show as your go-to resource, your virtual bestie, or your secret weapon to sanity. I might not have all the answers, but I'm searching for them just like you. Why don't we find them together? So get comfy and get curious. This is Casey's Corner. If you're tuning in on Spotify, tap your screen now because this episode has a bonus video feature. Hey everyone, welcome to Casey's Corner. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today's episode is a fan favorite, I think, or at least it's going to be a fan favorite because it is a topic that when I post about it on Instagram, I get so many people who are commiserating with me and feel the same overwhelm of feeling like there's no organization in their home, feeling like things are so cluttered, feeling like there's just stuff everywhere. My guest today is Dr. Julia Raz, who is the owner of Golden West Organization. She actually has a PhD in communication, and I think that this is something that really has helped her excel in working with clients to really help understand why they're holding on to so many things and the way that they can process the removal and letting go of stuff. I actually invited her into my home to help me declutter and start just a brief little overhaul in organization of Kennedy's Playroom. I know a lot of us are inundated with toys, but we have done our best to keep everything contained into one room, but it's kind of bursting at the seams. So take a look at our conversation and how she helped me really put a great organization system in place for Kennedy. Check it out. Julia, thanks for coming over. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much for having me. Happy to be here. This is so cool. I mean, how on earth did you even get into organizing? Yeah, I decided to start decluttering my own house uh, years ago, just Mm -hmm. a couple years ago. I got really motivated after I saw a museum exhibit that was about minimalism and started decluttering just my own belongings. So not the other people in my house, but my own stuff and let go of about 80% of my own belongings. And that's what started me on this journey. And other people started noticing when they came to my home and thought, Maybe you should try doing this with other people. So do you think, I mean, I feel like when 2020 hit and everyone was Mm -hmm. kind of locked in, locked down, we all just started looking at all of our stuff and realizing we had too much stuff. I know I did this for myself Mm -hmm. too. um, And really just started the purge at that point. Mm -hmm. This sounds like around the same time that you were starting your business and everything, right? Yeah, yeah. So I started this in January, 2021 um, as an LLC. But just before that, I started... I'm just offering this for friends and family for free. And I started my own journey in 2019, but definitely during the pandemic, we were all stuck at home. I think many people were just looking around at their home in ways they had never done so before, having to figure out homeschooling, work from home, and just even, even if not even those things, just all of their stuff, they were spending way more time with it than ever before. And so I think that that's what really pushed a lot of people to want to make a change in their home. Yeah, you couldn't avoid it. You were stuck at home, you were looking at all of your stuff. That's Mm -hmm. for sure how I felt. Oh my goodness, I I totally felt that. So what are some common habits that we can all kind of adopt to just really declutter and keep things a little bit more organized at home? Mm -hmm. I think that decluttering can seem like a really daunting task the first time around. And I would say it is the first time around, but it never has to be as big of a task as letting go of 80% of your belongings, like what I did, or spending like six or eight hours in one room. Um, After that initial push that you do for yourself, it's really about maintenance. And I think it's any sort of maintenance, anything you have to upkeep, you can think about this in the same way. So as your possessions are incoming into your home, you start assessing what you have. Do you actually have space Mm -hmm. for it? So I think that most of us are always thinking about the stuff first and the space second. That's true. So it's all about, oh, I want this. Uh, I just got this. Not thinking about the square footage and the reality of their home. Yes. Uh, My husband's very good at that. (laughs) When really, you know, uh, you need to think about the actual space you live in, what you want it to feel like, who are the other people in your home. Mm -hmm. I see the same issue in 800 square feet as I do in 8,000 square feet. Wow. Uh, It's it's all about making the most of the space that you have. And Mm -hmm. that means that you have to regularly assess your belongings because stuff's always coming in and it always will. Do you ever go through what I try to do sometimes is like the, if I'm bringing something in, something has to go Mm -hmm. out. I think many people adopt the one in one out rule and they find that very helpful, especially when it comes to clothes. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, when they're trying to maintain a closet of clothes and not have it be overflowing as in, you know, something new comes in, then you, you pull one out. Personally, I keep my closet 
pretty minimal, so I don't have to do that all the time, but I regularly declutter every single month, even though my house is pretty uh, minimalist as it is. I feel like, and this is, maybe you've heard this from other clients or something, mm -hmm. but for me, the decluttering part is almost a little bit of um, an anxiety release yes. for me. And mm -hmm. it's almost, and I think I did a lot of it, like I said, during mm -hmm. lockdown and during quarantine because it was the only thing I could control. Mm -hmm. It had mm -hmm. such a sense of control. And I've heard this from a lot of friends that I've talked to as well, was that just kind of decluttering and getting rid of stuff mm -hmm. was just a way that you could actually take a firm grasp on something. Yeah, I think that's absolutely This true. is uh, yeah. Julia's <laughs> daughter, Abigail. Yeah, Kennedy did not <laughs> morph into a different person. That's for those funny. of you who might be wondering, so she's gonna help us out in a little bit anyway. So go ahead. It is what it is. It yeah, is so, this um, is post-pandemic life. <laughs> I think for a lot of people who hire um, the services that we offer, they cannot bring themselves to get started. So that initial decluttering process that you're talking about, that you and many people did, a lot of people cannot bring themselves to start. Starting is too hard. It's right. too overwhelming. It brings on too much anxiety. They'll open that junk drawer and they'll just close it over and over again because mm -hmm. it's just too much to get started. And so that's when we really come in because we do that part that people have been putting off for months or maybe decades. Uh, and, and they finally are willing to start looking for those things that they've been putting on. So what do you think are the three most commonly cluttered or unorganized places in the house? Yeah, I think the garage for people oh, who yeah. have a garage, right? Like yeah. some people don't have a garage. If you're a renter, you may not have that mm -hmm. space. That's true. <laughs> Do you want to wait until it gets yeah, that's fine. <laughs> this is real life. <laughs> okay. Um, garages. I think that things go there to die, like truly. Um, yes. Like for most people, they yeah, don't. Yeah. You don't want to go that way? I'm go around. <laughs> Abigail's escaping the playroom. Yeah, yeah. So, you know. I think that this is a really hard pill for a lot of people to swallow that a lot of people cannot fit their cars or any even one vehicle in the garage, right. but the vehicles are a much more valuable asset to protect than any of the junk they have in their garage. Now, I would never refer to it as junk in front of a client, but when you think about it, if you were trying to protect your assets, uh, whatever the value of your cars, it's probably more important to put it in side of the garage right. than whatever it is that you're storing in there. But I personally am the kind of person that would pack things into a garage in the past. I was holding on to boxes for decades from a deceased relative that I couldn't bring myself to part with because mm -hmm. like so many people, I felt like I was going to lose that person even though they were gone. Yeah. And it, things from our childhood, just all of those things, our kids stuff from when they were babies that we may not feel like we're mentally ready to let go of. Yeah. We just stuff it all in the garage because it's a lot of people just think of it as a storage unit right. instead of a space to store, you know, just the vehicle or maybe your bikes or, you know, things yeah. that you absolutely need to have in there. And things that come in and out, things that actually have movement to it. Not, yes. I like that. Yes. Not like for things that go, for they go, go to die. die. Right? Yeah. right? I mean, it's a very strong way of putting it, but um, I'm really known for being brutally honest and gentle simultaneously. So I'd say it like it is, but okay. I also understand how much to push people in sure. a situation. So the second place, so there's garage number one. Okay. Number two, kitchen. Uh, it's one of the spaces we're hired to do the most. Okay. Um, it's an area of frustration for so many families, and I work almost exclusively with moms yep. that are in this kitchen every day, <laughs> and, they're just like, and they're like, how do I how do I even make this work for me? Yeah. Uh, I'm so busy all the time. I have other family members, even after I, you know, to the best of my ability, put everything back, it just becomes a mess. And like, for me, even the never ending flow of dishes is always a struggle right. in my home. Um, so that's a second space. Okay. And I think especially like when people combine, um, when people move in together, they may have stuff oh, from right. their past, their single lives or previous relationships. All these different mismatched right. dishes and, and whatever, right? And they may have never yeah. taken the time as a couple because of life circumstances to, or roommates, whoever it is, is to actually make some decisions on those things. Mm -hmm. So kitchen, absolutely. Um, including food items that a lot of people don't regularly go through their food items yes. uh, to make sure that everything is actually yes. edible. Um, yes. So yes, kitchen and um, regardless of the size Can of the kitchen. Kids don't last forever, guys. They really yeah. don't, I promise. Yeah, and the third space is definitely anything regarding kids. And I think yeah. this is maybe just because I mainly work with moms, but anything with kids. So kids' playrooms, kids' bedrooms kids stuff going everywhere in the home. Right. So one of the things I commonly hear, to contain it, right, right, is that like my kid, whether it's one kid or many kids, their stuff is in every single space in the home. And that parents will feel like I don't have any space for me anymore because right. my kid stuff's in my bedroom, it's in the living room. It's like, there's just no space. Yes. And so people start feeling kind of suffocated like they don't have any space of their own, regardless yes. of the size of their home. So 
kids spaces absolutely yeah. um i always I think kills the mood like rolling over and rolling <laughs> over. oh there's a llama llama <laughs> right i mean and if you're co-sleeping with your kids they may be in your yeah. room anyway yeah. but just you know for me i try to find spaces in the home where i can help parents reclaim something that's just for them i like that i, like I that think a lot. it's really important to do that <laughs> well clearly this playroom needs a little bit of help i have tried i feel like i'm the i'm that client that i feel like if if it's away, if it's mm -hmm. out of sight, out of mind. But the problem is I then forget what's actually in the bins. I yeah, have lots yeah. of bins, lots of, lots of cubbies and storage bins and things like that. But I really need a better grasp on mm -hmm. what's in it, what can go. And I heard that Abigail has some tips for us she too. De yeah, definitely does. I, I think that you have some really good structure in place here. Okay. This is a really nice room. I like you already okay. have that structure in place. Um, but like so many people, when things are out of sight, they're out of mind. And yeah. I think this is even more true when it comes to kids. If they don't see it, they don't even know it exists. Exactly. Adults too. But exactly. um, when yes. it comes to trying to, you know, help your kids make play choices, like if they can't see it, they may forget mm -hmm. it and even ever exists. Correct. So, but I understand the desire to just throw things in something because it is easy and it's, it is out of sight. Right. But from a play perspective, I'm going to talk about some things we can do that uh, we'll make it easier for her to know where everything is. And you. Perfect. All right. Mm -hmm. We're going to reposition a little bit and head into the playroom. Okay. So we're back in the playroom, uh, getting down and dirty, <laughs> literally. <laughs> yes. But we picked out one of the boxes from Kennedy's playroom. Mm -hmm. And Julia's going to kind of walk us through the ways that she works with clients and talks through every box to make sure we're getting rid of what needs to get be getting rid of, gotten rid of. I can't even talk today. Um, and the best way to kind of minimalize. So how do we start? So we're gonna do a miniature version of what I would do in a, a whole project. Okay. Uh, so normally what we would do is pull everything out of this room and sort it by type for you and then okay. talk about it by type. So for example, all the games would be together, all the Barbies would be together before right. you even came in the room. But Got it. for time's sake today, we're just gonna talk about items in this bin. How many people are on your team when you're doing this? Uh, it depends on the project. There okay. could be up to three of us cool. all at the same time, which makes, it just means that we work a lot faster yeah. for that reason. Yeah. Because when I work alone, which I sometimes do, you know, it's just a longer process. So. For sure. We're gonna dump everything out. All right. And we're only going, the only things we're gonna put back in are the things that we're gonna keep. Okay. So, and nearby you wanna have a trash bag. Mm -hmm. uh, if you only have trash bags, that's fine. But one trash bag for trash and mm -hmm. another bag or box for donations. For donations, okay. uh, And the goal is to get out the things that you no longer want. Now, your daughter is five. Yes. So, a few things that I wanted to, to say before we get started. Yeah. She can make decisions about her things to an extent. But right. I always want, tell parents, you're the parent. Yeah. So no matter how much they say, I must keep this, you ultimately make those decisions. It's really, really hard. Right. So, but ideally, in the future, she would be involved in this process. Okay. And one of the ways that I like to... You mean it's not smart to just do it while she's at school and get rid of everything? Uh, that's kids, totally what I do. Or spouses. I don't recommend throwing away things without their consent. Bad Fair. idea. Right? Fair. You want to trust you. But in the future, if she was here, one of the ways that I like to help children make decisions with decluttering... Mm -hmm. um, and I think this works for adults too, is that you use the bin as a parameter that is neutral. Okay. So you say, okay, we can keep toys. You can keep as many toys as you want that fit inside of this bin. If it doesn't fit, we can't keep it. Sure. And that way it's making the bin the bad guy and not you. Okay. So I, I use this throughout my whole house as a way to keep my holiday decor under control. Is that like I have certain size bins. I'm like, okay, all of whatever that holiday is stays That's there. If it doesn't fit, I have to let some go. Yeah. And it, again, takes some of the pressure off of you. You mean it's not just buying go. new bins? No, <laughs> I know. I still said that on the drive here of like, oh, just buy a larger <laughs> bin. No, but like if you want to keep things under control and you do not right. have to buy any new product, you can make this, not just this one, but all of the ones that you yeah. have around this room as the okay, if we are bringing in more, we're gonna have to let some of this go so that it actually fits and it's not overflowing into the whole room. Right. Okay, I'm gonna right. dump this out. Here we go. I love this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my How's goodness. This feel? Is it stressful? <laughs> it no, okay? it's okay. You wanna know okay, why? Okay. And I think it's okay because I know what's in here and I do think that, and Kennedy and I have talked about it, yeah. that she's ready to get rid of the Duplo, which is, okay, you know, like these bigger Legos. Um, cause mm -hmm. she likes the smaller ones. So it's kind of like a growing up, moving on kind of yeah. thing. I think we're okay with that. Okay. So just in the case of this, since she's already given you the okay, yep. um, I'm going to look for things that are not Duplo yep. uh, in here for you to talk about. Uh, and I'm just going to kind of set those aside sure. for you to look at. Okay. Uh, but otherwise, do I have your permission if I see anything like this to put this in the donate box? Yes. 
always good to ask permission to, you know, because I, I always tell my clients, I'm not going to toss anything without your consent. Fair. Uh, even if I think it looks like clear trash. So for example, this, tr this plastic bag, I would still ask you, can I put this in the trash bag? Right. It's yeah. because I don't want to do anything without people's consent. So okay, fair this enough. is going to be fun. Abigail, do you want to help with this? Abigail, everything that looks like this, we're going to put in the box. Can you help with that? Can to help? Can you help me? That goes aside in the other pile. That goes aside. So things that don't look like that. But these ones, can you put those in the box? All right, so this bit is pretty easy. I definitely want to do one more where the decision is a little bit harder, sure. where, you know, you're going to be debating on things. Okay. But uh, it's always nice when an entire category, you can just say, we're ready. Let's right. let it go. Yeah. Let's just let it go. You know, I quote Elsa every single day of my life as an Elsa from Frozen. Let it go. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's some sort of Elsa wagon in here of some sort. Okay, so, so this is what's left yes. out of the box. Yeah, so just in general, the way that um, I talk through decision-making with people on anything mm -hmm. is using the following criteria, which is do you love it? Do you need it? Do you use it? Do you have space for it? And how easily can it be replaced and at what price? Criteria of loving something can be really hard when it comes to toys and right. kids because they might say, I love everything. The truth is, if you love, ev if you say you love everything, then nothing is really special to you. You know, yeah. everything's special, then nothing's special. And I also think that um, it's a great life lesson. Uh, you know, before we even started, we were talking about, you know, family members, relatives who might hold on to a lot of things and that it's never too early <laughs> to start teaching, making decisions about one's possessions, Yeah, you know? Yeah. So, um, we always have to be thinking about the actual physical space that we have here in this room. Um, yep. And sometimes it's going to be hard. And this is where the, ultimately you being the parents sure. kind of comes into play sure. here. Um, you know what, what your kid likes and actually plays with. Right. Now, they, what I have found 100% of the time after decluttering, when a kid comes back, if they weren't involved, they are so happy because they've seen toys they haven't seen in a long time. Right. They don't notice it's what's like going on. It's like, yeah, they're yeah, going it's to like, the... Yeah, they're, they're just excited about, oh my gosh, like, look, oh, I forgot about that. It's like a new room to them. Right. So I've only had positive um, things happen from this, so I'm going to just tell you that as we're going through it. And totally you know fine. your daughter very well, so yes. we're going to try and make decisions rather quickly because okay. if we take a minute per object, we're going to be here the entire day. Totally. Right? So you know, like, is this a keep or is this so a So that I actually know belongs to another set, so would it's it be, there? yeah, it's one of these, that frozen busy book. In general, if you can, very quickly put it back where it goes, mm -hmm. let's do it right now instead yeah. of putting it aside and Agreed. not doing it. Alright, then it's just done. Agreed. I don't know what these busy books are, but they look cool. They're cool, yeah. <laughs> Uh, that can go. That was an old costume. Okay. Go. Okay. Go. Go. Yeah. <laughs> Trust. I think she'd be okay without that. Okay. What about just looking at the things here? Anything that so you think she needs? Because these this, are small Lego pieces. Those are small Legos. She just, does play yeah, she plays with Legos. Um, this is part of a costume that can go right here, easy in the dress up bin. Cool. Yeah. Um, this is American Girl mm -hmm. stuff that she does play with. And then I think this other stuff would not be missed. Okay. One of the things I was just showing with Abigail uh, right now too is that uh, I think so often we say to our kids, just like clean up your room, clean up right. the mess. Uh, instead of being very precise on what we want done. Mm. So I've found that I have the most success with kids and adults when I give very specific instructions. Like I want you to put the play food in the play kitchen inside of the refrigerator. It's too big of a task otherwise, yeah. but it's, yeah. and yeah. then also maybe modeling it for them many times okay. <laughs> until they get it themselves. Because the reason that she's able to put away her whole room by herself now is because we decided together where everything goes and we've done it together. Like, right. okay, we're putting the Barbies here the magnet tiles go here, you know? And I, I had to do that with her. Uh, it's a skill that she had to learn. Well, speaking of Barbies, I feel like, my goodness, Barbie's great, but how many accessories does a girl need? Um, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. you were telling me about yeah. a cool tip that you have on yeah. a certain container to use. So can we grab a Barbie box and maybe yeah. try one out? Or let's let's that. try that. All right, so Abigail is actually, she's gonna come help us do a Barbie box because Julia has a cool little, uh, Organizing contraption, which where do you like to get your supplies for organi yeah. organization? Yeah, so first and foremost, I like using what people already own because um, sure. they don't want to bring more stuff into their house. Right. However, there are times where it really can be helpful. You're gonna help us, right? You're help us. Okay. Can you look that one? Okay. <laughs> it can be really helpful sometimes to have some additional support. So personally, I like buying from Walmart. I know I do not get paid by the Home Edit nice. at all to buy this. But this <laughs> is the Home Edit's Walmart line, which is like half the price of the container store. Yeah. So for a, I think there's I have an additional piece in here, but a five piece set is about twenty five dollars, or wow. two of the large bins is 
twenty dollars. I know these prices a little too well. No, that's okay. So when I, I usually when I go to a consultation in home, I'll show some examples of this right. so people can see. And they have these for inside of drawers. Like these fit great inside of drawers, and I can do drawer totally. configurations. But um, these types of sets I love because they're clear. Yeah, and you can see. You can, you can see. actually see. What, and that's what I kind of am realizing that I regret from these big cubes. Um, for those who might be listening and not necessarily watching, they are, you know, the canvas. These are the 11, I think, 11 inch cubes. Yeah. And I have 13 inch cubes and stuff from Target, from Walmart, wherever. And that is a problem because, especially the little ones, they're having a hard time realizing where things go because mm -hmm. they're not going to, you know, they don't want to take the time to pull everything out and see yeah. what goes where. Yes. So we're going to dive into this box. Do I, <laughs> do you want to do the, um, the official dumping of the box, Abigail? Sure. Okay. Oh, that's always a fun one. <laughs> we're going to dump the box. Perfect. Ooh. Oh boy. Yeah. So, right. so I brought a lot of small bins that are stackable. And okay. one of the things that Abigail is going to show us how to do is to uh, sort the Barbie accessories. Now, do I recommend this for every person? No, this is right. only if you or your kid or someone else in the home actually wants to upkeep this. You always have to be realistic with yourself. That's right? very true. So I tell people, you know, what you see on Pinterest may not really be the reality of what you're going to do. So I want to yeah. set you up for success. We're just going to show an example of, okay. you know, a kid like Abigail likes to have her Barbie things sorted. Uh, so Abigail, can you use these small bins and put all the accessories like clothes, shoes let's use these small ones so if we find a shoe can we put them all in the shoe bin okay so i'm gonna turn you ready turn this around? is some this is some official hollywood instruction okay there we go. <laughs> just turn, turn around and the face camera. the camera there we go <laughs> yeah and there she you, is can you show how you put some accessories in this small bin so so you find like things look that look like that they go like these things yeah that you think like go in the small bin so we have lots of room to put. Now yeah. do you have to, can you put any small things in there? Like headband, shoes, it doesn't matter what, as long as it's tiny, it can go in there? Like anything that's a set. Accessora. Okay. Accessory. Accessora. I like that. Accessora. Yeah, I mean, Accessories. you could you could go as far as separating the shoes, but right. let's just be realistic here and do all small well, Barbie and things I think, first. Yeah, I think like that that was definitely shoes an or perfect shoes. Mm -hmm. That was an unrealistic expectation I think I set a while ago. Like I tried to do one whole little container of shoes and it was like that never is gonna stick so no but i do think we can do a separate one for clothes so loose okay clothes. loose clothes um, anything that makes cloth. sense yeah okay we can put that in here any loose cloth I and then to the help kind of weed through should i put the larger dolls back in the box you can so just leave, you them can see, leave them aside. Leave them aside. Okay. We're going to put them in there too. If you oh, can't okay. fit them in there. Cool. I just yeah. want to reiterate that this only makes sense if you want to take the time to upkeep this. Right. Because I think some people might watch this or listen to this and think, oh, I would, I'm never, ever going to do that. Right. This so, isn't necessary. This is no. like if you want to actually be hyper organized about it but yeah so what's what's a more lax alternative then Julia? yeah i mean i think what you had done initially just is, in a regular is fantastic box. the only thing i would add on to this would be a label on the outside that said barbies and then yeah. i would still do a separate one that said barbie accessories okay um because at age five and up they're probably starting reading if not reading yes yeah. you can even do before they are readers you can do a picture there first oh so that even like really young kids can Cute. still understand what to do but that's yeah. what i would do so that every person knows where it goes yes so um, like yeah. we would sort things to know where they go otherwise it would just be like everything would be loose out it would be so loosey goosey it would be loose loose out so we pulled aside all of the dolls and this is just accessories and i purposely left some room to grow here okay because what some people might think is like oh, oh my gosh what am i going to do when the next barbie accessory comes in now right. one solution if you've already filled this is then you let some go when the new stuff comes in right. but this could be the entire just all barbie accessories this is what it's going to be and then we would have a separate one just like this i don't want to leave it like this because it looks so nice for the barbies and mm -hmm. i know like for abigail we have a second one of these clear ones that stacks on top of it and that's where all of her barbies go they're all standing upright they're all the dolls oh, they're on top stand. they're oh, all there cool. on top standing straight up um in there and then we put the accessories that's underneath very them. cool i like that idea and um, that way she can just pull out both barbie bins when she's yeah. ready for it but you know knowing what we have today what i would recommend we do is we do all of the dolls Mm -hmm. here and then we do in one of your empty ones we do all of the accessories in the other one for now sure that, that's what makes sense all right okay let's do it and put all the dolls in there so now typically how long would a room of this size take you and your team 
Yeah, so I, looking in this room, um, I think it would take us approximately five hours, uh, even though the room was quite tidy when we started. Uh, okay. The quantity of small pieces, as you know, with kids' toys, it's quite a lot. That's a nice way of saying Kennedy <laughs> has a lot of crap. <laughs> I, you know, I has a lot of stuff. I always use positive terms in everything that I do. <laughs> Yeah, so I think it would take approximately five hours, and a lot of that really depends on you and how quickly you make decisions. So yeah. I always tell people with my estimate, it's an estimate, just that. Because if we get stuck on something and you need to chat for a long time, mm -hmm. or you have other life obligations happening, it takes us more time. For sure. Right? Because I've worked with people where we spent five hours with a bin this size <sighs> because they needed to talk about through everything it, through everything right so yeah. like when you're really decisive like you were earlier mm -hmm. it can go much much more quickly i always like to see either photos videos or go in person to visit to see what's going on because right. the size of the room isn't how i make the decision it's the quantity of the stuff and the nature of the stuff okay so julia has given herself a challenge that i am happy to allow her to take on and she is going to take 20 minutes to transform this whole wall as much as she can you're gonna watch it now. Okay, great. Um, if anyone shows this video to Kennedy, you're dead to me. <laughs> <laughs> So 20 minutes, you did it. You all came Beautiful together. clear <laughs> surface, we moved some stuff around. Yeah. I mean, I think the big thing really is that you have to be mentally prepared and mentally ready to do something big like this. To do, Absolutely. or not even big, to just to start the whole decluttering and organizing process, yeah, right? absolutely. I only work with people who want me to work with them. Sure. So it's never an intervention setting. It's I'm ready, right. I'm willing to get started. And as you can see, we, we let go of a lot of things in that short amount of time, but yeah. it is quite a large task to have to do an entire room. And it, but it feels really good when you get to see, you know, clear yeah. surfaces and getting to see the things that, you know, your daughter loves the most. The things that she actually has. Right? And well, yeah. Gets to play with now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you know, this is a playroom, obviously. There mm -hmm. are a lot of other tricky places. You mentioned kitchens, garages, mm -hmm. closets. One mm -hmm. thing I, we were talking about this as we were cleaning a, a little bit, mm -hmm. is how women especially mm -hmm. have a really hard time letting go of things in their closet. Why do you think that is? Yeah, I mean, as a woman myself and a mom who works pretty much exclusively with women, time and again I come across women who are having a really hard time letting go of their clothes. Clothes from before they had kids, um, before the pandemic, and they've uh, changed sizes, or just, you know, anything from their past. And I think that we put a lot of memories into our objects and especially to our clothes. And uh, that's why it's really hard to let them go. And it can feel like a really, really emotional experience because we feel like we might be trying to become a different version of ourselves. Mm. And ultimately you're having to confront yourself. I mean, with any object in the yeah. home, but I find that to be especially true when we're talking about our closet. I hear entire life stories when I go through closets with people. I, I started um, opening yeah, up to yeah, her. I'm like, much. oh, well, yeah, I can't really yeah, give this yeah. away. No, no, yeah. it's, it's absolutely yeah. the truth. Um, but it's such a good feeling. Like I tell people, envision opening your closet where all of the clothes are clothes that fit you now that you actually enjoy wearing. Mm. Um, a lot of people will say, I want to keep pants from, you know, when I was two sizes smaller as motivation. But think about it. Does it ever, don't do does that. it feel motivating? No, no, like it never feels good. But no. instead it does feel great to open your closet and see clothes that you can wear today that you actually enjoy. That are not just like things that you have because of the size you're in now. No, it's because of the size you have these things that you mm -hmm. love. Um, and so I recently helped somebody let go of more than half of their closet yeah. that they had been holding on to for like a decade because they just couldn't let go of that past version of themselves. And it was really liberating, but also super hard uh, and an I'm emotional sure. experience. Um, but sure. it's, it's truly just about accepting yourself. And this whole process is about self-reflection, truly. And I'm just here as a guide.
That's really what my Well, how is it that people can work with you? Because I yeah. know we were talking people work with you digital or virtually, yeah, which is awesome, yeah. and in person. Yeah. So if you want your yeah. home organized and decluttered, how can everyone find you? Yeah, yeah. So at our website, uh, goldenwestorganizing.com, that's where you can get in touch with me. You can send me an email through there or call or text me. And I work all over the greater Los Angeles area, but we also do virtual services over Zoom. Um, and we also travel as well, cool. too. So most of our clients are in the L.A. area, but really anyone who needs help with decluttering and organizing and is motivated and ready, we're here to help. No amount of clutter is too much for us. Amazing. Well, we, I will be sure to put uh, all of Julia's links and some of her recommendations for organizing tools and everything in the show notes. Thank you so much for coming oh, over for and actually me. hanging out at my house. This is and, wonderful. And actually making a huge dent. <laughs> Abigail, thank you to you, too, no, my dear. Goodbye. Say goodbye. Say see you real soon. Thanks so much for listening to today's episode. Be sure to rate and review the episode or better yet, do me a favor and go ahead and give this a share over on your social media. If you're on Instagram, be sure to share it in your stories and tag me at it's Casey Potts and I'll be sure to send some love right back. Stay tuned for more podcast episodes. You can also find me over on Instagram or on YouTube by searching Casey's Corner with Case. See you real soon.